if there's one thing that gives instrument students headaches, it's figuring out how to set up and use the GPS for shooting approaches. GPS is supposed to make our lives easier, but the procedures for which buttons to push, or buttonology as we sometimes call it, can cause frustrations, especially in a critical phase of flight like setting up an approach. Let's look at the Garmin 430-530, a slightly older unit still equipped in most IFR trainers. We're looking at the 530 here, but the procedure is identical on the smaller 430 unit. We're doing a simple IFR flight from College Park to Easton, across the Chesapeake. Okay, first things first, one of the biggest controversies in aviation, whether to set up your map with North being on top or the aircraft track being on top. Without starting a fight here, let's just see how to adjust it. Right now it's North up, but if we pushed Menu, then Enter for Setup Map, then twist the outer knob to move down one to the orientation field, now the inner knob to scroll through the options, we can go to Track Up and hit Enter. The airplane always points up now, and the map rotates around its tracker course. Let's set up our flight by hitting FPL. Then if we press the knob, it brings up our cursor. Start spelling out the airport code. Spin the inner knob for K, then the outer knob one click to move to the next letter, inner knob to spin to C, and we're spelling out KCGS for College Park. Now we'll hit enter to load that in. We'll put in our destination as well, Easton, using the inner and outer knobs in the same way, K-E-S-N, and hit enter. So this is our departure and destination. Let's say our flight plan has one en route waypoint, the deal intersection. If we want to enter that, we could scroll to the destination, we want to put deal before that, and begin spinning the inner knob to spell out deal, D-E-A-L-E, -E, and hit enter. This is a short flight though, so let's say our clearance just has us going direct to Easton. So we can delete deal by hovering over it and hitting CLR, then enter. So we're set up for our flight to Easton. Our desired track, DTK, is 117 degrees, while our actual track, TRK, is 319, since we're just about lined up with runway 33 at College Park here. Now the plan is to fly direct to Easton, and then be assigned the ILS approach to runway 4. There are three ways we can be instructed by ATC to get established on the approach, each of which will require different procedures on the GPS. First, we can be cleared from the initial approach fix RICME, so we would fly towards RICME, which has a hold in lieu of procedure turn. There are two options from this point. We can either be cleared for the full approach, meaning we go to RICME, execute the hold in lieu of procedure by making a parallel entry, and then flying inbound on the localizer course. The other option is to be cleared straight in by ATC, meaning we don't need the hold in lieu of, and just turn into the approach course from RICME. Besides these two options, the third is to get assigned vectors to intercept the localizer course. ATC will assign us headings, which will allow us to intercept the approach on about a 30 degree angle several miles prior to the glide slope intercept, which is around Wegro. So let's look at each of these methods for getting established. In each of these scenarios, we'll be assigned an approach. Here we're flying direct to Easton per our flight plan. We've just picked up the ATIS and are told by approach to expect the ILS to runway 4. Upon hearing that we can expect this approach, we can set up our GPS. Let's hit the PROC button for the procedures page. Now hit enter for select approach. We'll take the ILS, so hit enter. Now we select our transition. The options are vectors or RICME. I suggest that for all three of our scenarios, we select RICME, even for the scenario where we'll be getting vectors. Without getting into it here, using vectors on older units like the 430, 530 can be problematic if there are changes to our instructions. So it's easier to just select the initial approach fix in each case. We'll just load the approach now. Since it's an ILS approach, we get the caveat that the GPS can only be used for monitoring the course, not as the primary means of navigation. Because we only loaded the approach, it's added to our flight plan, but our guidance is still taking us to Easton. Nothing's changed but our preparations. We'll brief the approach and set up our communications and frequencies. Now, here's where our three paths diverge. In the first scenario, we're going to be told to proceed direct RICME, the initial approach fix. Let's activate the approach we loaded by hitting PROC, then scrolling to activate approach with the outer knob and hitting enter. Now the route is taking us direct to RICME, a desired track of 161 degrees. For the first scenario, we're getting cleared for the full approach, including the procedure turn. There's nothing further to set up for that. As we approach RICME, the GPS announces that we'll be holding parallel. 
It'll then count us down to the entry turn to 220. This will put us on a parallel track to the inbound course. After one minute, it begins another countdown to a 085 heading. This will give us an intercept for the approach course. As we begin this turn, we'll want to switch the VOR receiver from tracking the GPS to tracking VLOC by pressing the CDI button. Now the VOR receiver is tracking the ILS and will set the approach course of 041 degrees on it. From here, we can intercept the localizer and follow it inbound. The GPS is still tracking the approach, though we're using the ILS as the primary means to navigate as we should here. As we cross Rickme, the unit goes to the next leg, showing we grow as the next fix. Now for the second scenario. We're being cleared straight in, so no procedure turn. Again, we've already activated the approach and are proceeding towards Rickme. We're going to go into our flight plan by hitting FPL. Currently, the procedure has us going to Rickme, performing the hold, and then proceeding to Wegro. We don't want to do the hold, so we're going to hit the cursor button, use the outer knob to scroll down one to hold, and hit CLR. Now, what'll happen is that we'll approach Rickme, and rather than get primed for a procedure turn entry, it'll simply count us down to turn left to join the localizer course. And that's what we'll do. As we pass by Rickme, the GPS will sequence to the next leg to Wegro. Finally, we'll move back in our flight a bit to the original point of divergence. We've been told to expect vectors for the ILS runway 4. We've loaded the approach just as we showed earlier by selecting Rickme as the transition, not vectors. Our first instruction is to turn right heading 150. Then we'll be turned right again heading 220. This is the downwind leg for the approach. We can anticipate what's going on. Vectors from ATC will put us on a usually a 30 degree intercept to the approach course, and will have us intercept at a point that's far enough from the glide slope intercept to give us time to get set up. So what we can anticipate is joining the approach course between Rickme and Wegro. We could set this up by hitting PROC, then going to activate vectors to final, which is fine in more modern avionics, but in the 43530, I'd suggest doing it a different way. We want to activate the leg we'll be joining between Rickme and Wegro. Go to the flight plan page by hitting FPL and let's scroll to the end point of that leg, Wegro. Hit menu, then enter, enter. Some units allow you to hit the direct button twice to accomplish the same thing. Now, what's happened is the GPS has activated a leg from Wegro along the approach course all the way backwards to infinity. Wherever we join the course, the GPS will respond by showing the needle center. There's no fix to aim for, just the approach segment. So ATC turns us base, then tells us to turn to 070 to intercept the localizer, and we're cleared for the approach. We hit the CDI button to switch the VOR receiver over to the ILS, and can intercept the localizer and join from there. So those are the three main ways an approach like the ILS can be done, along with the buttonology associated with each. Hopefully this demystifies the process so you don't find yourself getting behind the airplane in this critical moment. Speaking of demystifying, make sure you're clear on all IFR procedures and knowledge by enrolling in Flight Insight IFR Online Ground School. Check out the course at flight-insight.com IFR or the link in the description.